Nonprofit organizations are vital to the quality of life of our communities. The competition in the nonprofit sector is extremely fierce. We have a lot of nonprofit organizations that are struggling to pay their bills and to keep their programs and services sustainable. 79% of all charitable contributions given in the United States to nonprofit organizations come from individual donors. Therefore, nonprofit organizations are turning to individual donors to help them remain sustainable. However, individual donors are demanding accountability like yourself. We want to be appreciated for our contributions. The traditional donor relationship between a donor and a nonprofit organization usually ends in frustration and lack of communication. This is where a donor gives the contribution and feels that the nonprofit organization no longer communicates with them, leaving the donor to ask the question, how do I move forward once I've given my contribution? There are two reasons <laughs> why donors stop giving to nonprofit organizations. One, they feel that they have not been properly thanked for their contribution. And two, they feel that the nonprofit organization has not communicated with them on how they have spent their money wisely. This unfortunately leaves the donor feeling like a victim of a one night stand. There are many fundraising classes now that teach nonprofit organizations on how to ask donors for money, how to practice the ask. However, if a nonprofit organization has done their job properly, and number four, cultivation. They should never have to ask you for your money. Now, let's take a look at a true donor cultivation cycle, what I like to call the love affair cycle. In a popular song, Kissed You Goodnight by Gloriana, a country band, the lyrics describe a first kiss between a couple on the front porch. In the lyrics and in the music video, nowhere, though, do you see where the gentleman takes time and pauses to suddenly ask the woman for permission to give her the first kiss. So just as it's not socially acceptable to ask for the first kiss, it should not be professionally acceptable to ask you as a donor for your first contribution. Allow me to demonstrate the love affair cycle. First, I'm gonna need a volunteer. Everyone meet Dean. <laughs> Dean is going to be my volunteer this afternoon. <laughs> Dean and I have a lot of mutual friends. Well, first, for this presentation, Dean and I are both single. Sorry, sweetie. <laughs> like I said, we have a lot of mutual friends, and they think that Dean and I would make a pretty cute couple. So they have conspired. They've invited us to a little matchmaking episode. This is where the first phase of the love affair begins, the introduction. Usually takes place in a social setting where this is where the conversation starts and the sparks begin to fly. Dean and I have a lot of commonalities. We both have a great appreciation for music and the art. We admire the great outdoors. And of course, we both love really good wine. This is going to be true when you, the donor, are introduced to a nonprofit organization. It usually takes place in a social setting, either a chamber business after hours event, another fundraiser, or another community event. The conversation starts, and your passion as a donor starts to emerge for the nonprofit organization's work and their programs. The second phase in the love affair cycle is the research. So after I leave to go home that evening, Dean is left there at the restaurant with our friends, and he starts to ask additional questions about me. It doesn't stop there. Once he gets home, he's going to take out the laptop, and guess what he's going to do? He's going to Google me. That's right. He's going to check out that LinkedIn page, check out my skills. He's also going to then head over to Facebook and check out all those wonderful photos of all the activities that I do outdoors. And he's thinking to himself, that Melissa's pretty cool. I'm digging her. 
After the introduction between you, the donor, and the nonprofit organization, the nonprofit organization is going to go back and they're going to start their homework and research. Just as you, the donor, should be doing your homework and research as well. A couple of things for you to look for. Make sure and visit their website. Make sure that they have their recent financial statements posted. If not that, they're 990. Also, check out their social media pages. You want to make sure that you know exactly what others in the community are saying about this nonprofit organization. Now, after the research phase, Dean is even more convinced that I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> and he wants to spend some more quality time with me. So he's going to pick up the phone. He's not going to text. I'm a little old school, OK? He's going to pick up the phone, and he's going to call me, and he's going to invite me out on that first date. Just as a nonprofit organization should be calling you as a donor. Inviting you to come and tour their facility. Inviting you to come and attend one of their upcoming events and or programs. So why are we doing all this homework and research? One thing in today's society that most people fear is that awkward silence. You know what I'm talking about. When we haven't done our homework and research and the conversation dries up. So if we're on that first date, the only thing that we can hear going on around us are the conversations at the tables next door or our forks clinking on our plates. No one wants to be there. If it's a business meeting, the only thing that we can hear is our heart beating in our chest. So not only do we do the homework and research to avoid that awkward silence, we also do this because it starts the conversation. It starts the cultivation and the nurture, nurtureship of the relationship. For this demonstration, all of the first dates and the first meetings have gone incredibly well. We've done our homework and we've done our research. Dean's falling in love with me. <laughs> the nonprofit organization is so in love with you, the donor. So now we're going to fast forward. You guessed it. The third date or the third meeting of the love affair cycle. Now, we all know what happens on the third date, correct? Well, remember, I'm old school. So in my day, the third date meant the first kiss. We've all been there. I'm assuming everyone in the audience is old enough to have experienced the first kiss. That awkward moment when we're on the front porch, we know what's coming next. We're swaying back and forth. We might be fiddling with keys in our pockets. Or we're staring down at the front porch thinking, you know what, this really needs to be stained pretty soon. <laughs> we know what's coming. We know what's coming. This same awkward moment happens between a donor and a nonprofit organization. There comes a time, usually the third or fourth meeting, when we as the donor know exactly what's coming next. Now what happens if all of a sudden, on the front porch, Dean stops mid-action and decides to ask me, Melissa, is it okay if I kiss you now? In the South, we might say, bless him. <laughs> He's probably going to crash and burn right there on the front porch, right? Remember, if he has done his job properly in cultivating and nurturing this relationship, there should never be an ask, just as there's never an ask for you, the donor, for your money. So the first kiss, the cultivation, the nurturing phase has gone really well. We're in love with each other. We want this to be a mutual transaction. So what's going to happen here? Dean's pretty confident of himself. <laughs> He's going to stand up straight and tall. He's going to pucker up. He's going to close those eyes, and he's going to lean in halfway. Same thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to stand up straight and tall, pucker up, close those eyes, and lean in halfway. Same thing is going to happen between the nonprofit organization and the donor. The nonprofit organization is going to come halfway. And you as the donor, you're in love with them. You can really see yourselves helping them make a difference. You're going to meet them halfway by giving them your contribution. A first kiss seals the deal. It creates a relationship and it starts the love affair. The same thing should be viewed with your first contribution to a nonprofit organization. It seals the deal, 
creates a relationship and should start that love affair. The love affair, once your contribution has been given to the organization, should be viewed as a two-way street, not a one-way street, with communication at the heart of the relationship. This is true regardless if the relationship is between individuals or an individual and a nonprofit organization. A love affair is built on communication, trust, and accountability. It takes work from both parties. And if that's the case, it's going to last a lifetime. Multiple communications, thank yous, return on investment reports from the nonprofit organization to you as the donor is going to ensure your return gift and avoid you feeling like you were a victim of a one-night stand. So my message to you is, if you feel that you are not getting this VIP treatment or that you are not currently involved in a love affair, I would like to remind you there are many fish in the sea. There are many nonprofit organizations out there waiting for you and for you to be their next love affair. <laughs>